Good evening, children. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, children. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. So when I started this chapter circles, I think I first did the extra problem so that it will be useful for your exams. I did not do NCRT first. Uh, we uh, we actually did some uh, uh, questions outside NCRT. So now we'll take up uh, exercise uh, 10.2 from NCRT. This is the last question in exercise 10.2. I'm coming from behind. So here. Prove that the opposite sides of a quadrilateral. Circumscribing a circle. Opposite sides of a quadrilateral circumscribing a circle. So the quadrilateral circumscribes a circle. That means it's outside the circle. Touching the circle. The, the four sides of the quadrilateral touch the circle. Or the four sides of the quadr uh, quadrilateral are tangential to the circle. They act as tangents to the circle. Prove that the opposite sides of a quadrilateral circumscribing a circle subtend supplementary angles at the center of the circle. Circle. Not a perfect circle though. Quadrilateral circumscribing the circle. Quadrilateral circumscribing the circle. OK, Let's ignore these. So here you can see a quadrilateral. Say A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D circumscribing a circle with center O. Circumscribing meaning lies outside the circle, touching the circle. So this is a quadrilateral A, B, C, D circumscribing meaning outside a circle here with center O. Now we need to prove that the opposite sides of the quadrilateral, which are the opposite sides? A, B, and C, D form one pair of opposite sides. Am I audible, children? Yes, ma'am. Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So A, B, and C, D. A, B, and C, D form one pair of opposite sides. B, C, and A, D form the other pair of opposite sides. We need to prove that the opposite sides subtend supplementary angles at the center. Opposite sides subtend. OK, now so let us see the angles. Let us see the angles subtended by the sides at the center. Let us see the angles subtended by the sides. OK, opposite sides. So sides at the center. So see here. Side AB subtends angle AOB at the center. Side AB subtends angle AOB at the center. You should join A to O and B to O. The side or the line segment is AB. The side of the quadrilateral AB subtends angle AOB at the center. How do we make out that angle? You should join A to O, B to O. So you can see the angle AOB. So how do you describe angle AOB? Angle AOB is the angle subtended by the side AB of quadrilateral ABCD at the center O. Similarly, join B to O and C to O. B to O is already connected, so let us join C to O. Let us join C to O. So now this angle is formed BOC. Angle BOC, this one, angle BOC is the angle subtended by side BC at the center. BOC is the angle subtended by the side BC at the center. Now the side is CD. Join C to O and D to O. Join C to O and D to O. Now this angle. 
angle C O D. Angle C O D is the angle subtended by the side C D at the center. And finally, angle A O D. Angle A O D is the angle subtended by side A B uh, A D A D at the center. So like this, we understood the four angles, four sides, so four angles at the center. OK, so like this, we've understood the angles subtended by the four sides of the quadrilateral at the center. Now let us choose the opposite. Uh, now let us choose the, uh, you know, the angles subtended by the opposite sides. So A, B and C, D. A, B and C, D. A, B subtends this angle. C, D subtends this angle. You must prove that they are supplementary. You must prove that they are supplementary. That is, you must prove that angle AOB plus COD is 180. Similarly, you must prove that angle BOC plus AOD is 180. Opposite sides subtend supplementary angles at the center. Opposite sides AB and CD. They make supplementary angles at the center. So the two angles are supplementary. You must prove two sides. Opposite sides. So two sides. So two angles. You must prove that they are supplementary. Prove that the opposite sides of a quadrilateral. Prove that the opposite sides of a quadrilateral. Circumscribing a circle subtend the opposite sides. They subtend supplementary angles at the center of the circle. OK, so this is what we have to prove. <clears throat> We'll take you to the next slide. Is the given information understood and uh, do you, is it clear as to what to prove? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay, so now construction. So this is the figure. You can see the circle with center O and quadrilateral ABCD circums, uh, circumscribing the circle with center O. And you can see angle AOB. AC, AC is not the diagonal, children. AC is not the diagonal. And BD is not the diagonal. AC and BD are not the diagonals. AC and BD, they are not the diagonals. All right. So now construction, join OP, join OP, OQ, OR, OS. Now what we're trying to do is, what we're trying to do is, now we have the points out, so we have the points A, B. Now before we do this actually, I think I'll explain without this. One second. Just a second, children, and let me just draw that again. Okay, ignore the extras, ignore the, I cannot erase this alone, I think. I can't erase, I think I can't erase this alone, so ignore these. So center, and we understood all this, like this. Okay, so now A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. Okay, I should say this. So I, I did mention that the, uh, that the sides of the quadrilateral are tangential to the circle. I did say that. The sides of the quadrilateral are tangential to the circle. That means AB acts as a tangent to the circle at P. At P. BC acts as a tangent to the circle at Q. CD acts as a tangent to the circle at R. And AD acts as a tangent to the circle at S. 
So we have four tangents A, B, B, C, C, D, A, D. Points of contact P, Q, R, and S. Points of contact P, Q, R, and S. Now, if you can see A is a point, A is a point outside the circle. A is a point outside the circle. And you can see this AP and AS. You can see AP and AS. So you can say that AP is equal to AS because they're tangents from the external point of the circle. So like that, you can say that uh, BP is equal to BQ because they're tangents from the external point of the circle. P is the external point. BP is equal to BQ. Similarly, C is an external point of the circle. CQ is equal to CR. Tangents from the external point of the circle are equal in length. D is the external point. DS is equal to DR. So what we're going to do is, we said AP is equal to AS, right? So we're going to make them triangle. So now, now, as of now, we don't see we don't see AP and AS in two triangles. Now, for the sake of triangles, we just join. We join OP. Now, what happens? AP is a side of triangle AOP. Join. See, you you want AP in a triangle. You want AS in a triangle. You want AP in one triangle and AS in another triangle. So when you join OP, what happens? AP becomes AP becomes a side of triangle AOP. Now join OS, join this. AS becomes a AS becomes a side of triangle AOS. I'm talking about these two triangles. So like this, you join OQ and OR. So construction join OP, OQ, OR, OS. And take up the triangles where you can where you can use a property tangents from an external point of the circle are equal. Like take up the triangles where you have AP and AS as a side. So these two triangles and then two other triangles which have BP and BQ as side. So this one and this one. This one has BP as a side. This one has BQ as a side. Then this triangle and this triangle because uh, this one has CR as a side. This one has CQ as a side. And CR is equal to CQ. See, CR is in this triangle. CQ is in this triangle. And finally, these two triangles. These two triangles. DR of this triangle and DS of this triangle. DR is equal to DS, right? Tangents from an external point of the circle are equal. So DR of this triangle and DS of this triangle. So it's easy to show that these two triangles are congruent to each other. It's very easy. There's a lot of information. It's easy to show that these two triangles, this one and this one are congruent to each other. So you can say uh, this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees. This is 90, this is 90, this is 90 because we know that the tangent and the radius at the point of contact are perpendicular to each other. Radius perpendicular to tangent at the point of contact. So then like that, see here, OP is a radius. OP is a radius, P is a point of contact of the tangent AB. AB tangent to strictly go with the order in the uh, you know the theorem a p is the a b is the tangent a b is the tangent p is the point of contact p o is the radius through the point of contact a b is the tangent a b is the tangent p is the point of contact p o is the radius through the point of contact P O is the radius through the point of contact. So this radius through the point of contact on the tangent, they're perpendicular to each other. So 90 here. Similarly, 90 here. So in these two triangles, 90 degrees radius perpendicular to tangent, 90 degrees. And this one is the common side. See it? This one, A O is the common side. A O is the common side. This is the common side. AO is a common side. 
And then AP of one triangle is equal to AS of the other triangle. AP is equal to AS. We know the reason. Right angle, hypotenuse, side. RHS congruence criterion. The two triangles are congruent to each other. CP, CTC, angle 1 is equal to angle 2. Angle 1 is equal to angle 2. I have marked this angle. This one is 1 and this one is 2. So like that you can prove using the same criterion, using the same RHS rule, you can prove that. Okay, now let me ask one of you. Is Sudarshan there? Sudarshan, are you there? Yes, yes Sudarshan. Please tell us. Uh, prove that triangle uh, <clears throat> BOP is congruent to triangle BOQ. BOP, BOQ. Use the RHS criterion and show that. See, I've told, given you the criterion also. Use RHS and show that BOP is congruent to BOQ. Sudarshan? Shruti? I'm is there. Okay, Sudarshan, yes. Yes, Sudarshan. Shruti? Can I tell her? One second, Shakti. Bala Harish? How many of you volunteer? Shakti wants to say. Who else? Volunteers? Ma'am, even I can say. Arnav? Arna? Yes, ma'am. Okay, who else? Ma'am, Ishita? Yes. Ma'am, Priyadarshini. Priyadarshini, very good. I'm Srinivasan. Srinivasan. Okay, the question to uh, Shakti is Shakti prove that uh, the two triangles are congruent using the SSS rule. Show that these two triangles are congruent using the SSS rule. SSS congruence criterion. Um, BO is common, ma'am. Okay, BO is common. And OP is equal to OQ as its radius. Radius, OP is equal to OQ radius. And BP is equal to BQ as tangents from external points are equal. BP is equal to BQ, tangents from external point to circle are equal. So you yes. can use this rule also, but we'll not mess. Okay, use the same rule. Now we will have to prove that four sets of triangle, triangles are congruent to each other. We'll not use SSS for one, RSS for another one, and something else for another one. We'll not do that. We'll use the same rule everywhere. You choose which you want to use. Okay. Um. Arnav, uh, okay, I hope the class understood. You can also show that these two triangles are congruent using the SSS congruence criterion. BP is equal to BQ. BO is the common side. OQ is equal to OP radius or radii of the same circle. Okay. Arna will tell us. Arna, use, uh, not use, uh, show that these two triangles, I hope you can see what I'm uh, pointing out to this one, this one and this, the two triangles marked with a question mark. Show that they are congruent using the uh, SAS rule. SAS rule. Arna. Yes, ma'am, one second. Yeah. Ma'am, OR is equal to OQ radius. 
OR is equal to OQ radius, okay? Then angle ORC is equal to angle OQC, theorem 10.1, 90 degree. Yeah, this angle is equal to this angle, yes, 90 degrees, correct. And radius RC, is equal, RC is equal to QC by theorem 10.2, external point. Okay, so CR is equal to CQ, tangents from an external point of the circle are equal, CR is equal to CQ. So SA is congruent criterion, the two triangles are congruent to each other. So like this, you can use RHS, SSS, SAS. Okay, Nishita. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The left out pair. How do you want to show that they are congruent to each other? Which rule you want to use? Okay, what are the three different rules? Your question is, what are the three different rules we have discussed now? I'm a six. S and S and R. And R H S. Okay, you choose one of these and show that uh, these two triangles with the exclamation mark are congruent to each other. B, B O is common and B O and O Q are radii of the circle and B P and B Q are the tangents from a external point to the circle. No, I'm scared you're so wrong. Gonna... No, come again, come again, Nishita. No, I'm from the first. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't, I don't understand which two triangles uh, you were talking about. No, I'm P, B, O, and B, O, Q. No, we already discussed that, no? It's okay, Nishita. Ah. Yes, ma'am. Which two triangles are left out? Ma'am, uh, triangle SOD and ROD, ma'am. SOD and ROD. Okay, so how are they congruent? Ma'am, uh, O is equals OR, radii of same circle. And uh, OD equals OD because it's common. Okay. Then uh, uh, D is equals DR, uh, the length of tangents drawn from an external point or equal one. Very good. Okay. So, what is your rule? SS is congruent. SS is congruent criterion. The two triangles are congruent to each other. Very good. All right. Fine. So, that's it. So like this, we show that the triangles are congruent to each other. So when you show that these two triangles, this one and this one, this and this one, they are congruent. Angle one is equal to angle two, C, P, C, T, C. When you show that When you show that, uh, you know, this triangle, this triangle is congruent to this triangle, CPCTC angle 3 is equal to angle 4. Similarly, CPCTC from the congruency of these two triangles, angle 5 is equal to 6, and from these two triangles, angle 7 is equal to 8. Angle 1 is equal to 2 CPCTC, 3 is equal to 4, 5 is equal to 6, 7 is equal to 8. Now the sum of all these angles is equal to what? What is the sum of all these angles? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 360 degree, ma'am. 360 degrees. Sum of all the angles around a point is equal to 360 degrees. Okay, so angle 1, so you can see it here. Angle 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is 360. But we know that 1 and 2 are equal. See, now what you have to do is you try to retain only 2, two 3, 7, and 6 because they form a pair of opposite angles. See here, this one and this one. These two angles, you'll have to show that they're supplementary. You'll have to show that these two angles are supplementary. This angle and this angle, you'll have to show that they're supplementary. 
So it's about two, three, seven, and six. So what you do is you you try to have only two, three, seven, and six. How? So you should get rid of one. See here, you want two, three, seven, six. So you 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 don't want one. You don't want four. Then what else? Two, three, you want. Uh, you don't want uh, four and five. You don't want. And uh, six, seven, you don't want eight. You want only two, three, six, and seven. So you don't want these angles one, four, five, and eight. So instead of one, instead of one, you can say two. Instead of one, you can say two because one is equal to two. So instead of one, you say two. Instead of four, you can say three because three is equal to four. Three is equal to four. C P C T C. Three is equal to four. So instead of four, you say three because you want three. You don't want four. Instead of five, instead of five, five is equal to six. Five is equal to six. So instead of five, you can say six. And seven is equal to eight. C P C T C earlier. Seven is equal to eight. So instead of eight, you can say seven. So like that, you will get twice of angle two plus three plus six plus seven because you have to uh, angle two two times. This one two times, two times, two times. So two common. Or you can just give one more step twice of angle two plus twice of angle three. Plus twice of angle six plus twice of angle seven is equal to 360. Then two common, so you will get uh, angle two plus three plus six plus seven is 360. Two plus three is angle AOB. Six plus seven is angle COB. So twice of this is 360. So AOB plus COD is equal to 360 by two, which is 180. So we have proved that AOB plus COD, that is the opposite angles here formed by the opposite sides, are supplementary. That's what we have to prove. Now we know that the sum of these four angles is 360. Which four angles? These four angles. We know that the sum of these four angles will be 360. These four angles. That is AOB. Uh, what is this called? BOC. And this one is COD. And this one is DOA. Or we know that the sum of these four angles will be equal to 360. Because again, they're around the point. AOB, BOC, COD, AOD. 360. But we know that now here we have just proved that AOB plus COD is 180. AOB plus COD is 180. We proved. So on working this, you will get BOC plus AOD is 360 minus 180, which is 180. BOC, BOC plus AOD is also 180. So like this, we have proved that the opposite sides of the quadrilateral subtend supplementary angles at the center. Is it fine, children? Um, can we prove in another way? Yeah, tell me. Um, we can take uh, any one quadrilateral OQCM. Um, if we take that, we can get it as a square. Um, so we will get angle 5 is equal to angle 6, which is 45 degrees. Um, similarly, you can. Yeah, yeah, tell me one minute. How will you prove that uh, which is a square? Um, we can take OQCR um, in that uh, as OR is me, equal to... Let me follow you. OQCR, okay? In that OQ is equal to Any OR as squares. That means you are saying that that's, that means ABCD is a rectangle. This is a quadrilateral. It can be any quadrilateral. It need not be a rectangle. How do you say that angle A is 90, B is 90, C is 90, D is 90? No, no, please. Uh, I'm, what I'm saying is, you're saying this is 90. Because if, if you're saying, let, we can prove that this is square, that means this is 90. This is also 90. Then this is 90. If every corner is 90, ABCD is a rectangle. 
that means you're taking you're trying to say that abcd is a rectangle which means the quadrilateral is always a rectangle okay you go ahead that's not you go ahead i'll tell you um by that we will get angle how, how, how tell me how will you prove that this is a rectangle um as uh, oq is equal to r its radius and as orc is equal to angle oq is 90 degree okay congruency i understand congruency i understood then um by that we can get the oq cr is a, a square ma no no one minute you are going too fast congruency i understood after that i don't know what you saying um after proving that we will get as uh, angle pi after that we will get as uh, and oq is equal to qc is equal to cr is equal to r ma how um as uh, we know that oq is equal to r ah and uh, as qc is equal to cr as i'm sorry man i i i done a wrong method the first opposite sides are not equal only then you can talk about adjacent sides okay you got your mistake is it yes ma'am okay only when opposite sides are equal adjacent sides can be equal here opposite sides itself you cannot prove are equal okay children take a screenshot of this one please take a screenshot complete it uh, later so here i have not mentioned everything children rhs i have just you understand how to uh, work on rhs these two triangles are confirmed by rhs rule cp ctc 1 is equal to 2 like this these two triangles are confirmed by rhs rule cp ctc then some of all the angles around the point is 360 degrees i told you about this so opposite angles supplementary again use the same property sum of all the angles around the point is equal to 360 and substitute this aod plus cod is 180 this one is 180 this one is 180 this one is 180 so the sum of these two angles also will be 180 360 minus 180 which is 180 please take a screenshot done children yes ma'am okay so we have uh, you know we we did have a question like this we have done this earlier so the angle will be given to you and you will be asked to find this angle if supposing the measure of this angle is um say 95 degrees what will be the measure of this angle if the measure of this angle is 95 degrees if aob is 95 what will be the measure of cod Oh, children, eighty-five degrees. Eighty-five degrees. Eighty-five because half of the time is that supplementary. Ninety-five plus eighty-five is one eighty. I don't know why the class was quiet. Using this property, and we just proved that AOB plus COD is one eighty, and this one is one eighty. We just proved that this one plus this one is one eighty. 
So if this is 95 degrees, nothing else will be given. You will be given this figure and this angle is 95. Find the measure of this angle. And the measure of this angle will be 85 degrees. Because they have to be supplementary. So in this question, you can see a triangle circumscribing a circle. You can see a triangle circumscribing a circle. The radius of the circle is given to be four centimeters. And you can see the lengths of uh, these line segments marked here. CD is six centimeters and uh, uh, DB or BD is eight centimeters. Or we need to find the lengths of the line segments AB and AC. In other words, in triangle ABC, you know the length of one side BC, 14 centimeters. You need to find the lengths of the other two sides of the triangle. In triangle ABC, you know the length of the side BC, 14 centimeters. You must find the length of the side AB and AC. A, B and A, C. OK, so what we do is. We join, we join O to A. That is, we divide the whole triangle into three smaller triangles. And for each of the small triangles, we find out its altitude. We find the altitude to some part to any base. You cannot find the altitudes to all the bases. You can find the altitude only to one base. So that you can find the area of that triangle using the formula half base into height. Step one, divide the whole triangle ABC into three smaller triangles. Children, by the way, you've got your results. I've asked you to share your results on WhatsApp. Some of you have already done it. Most of you haven't. Ma'am, for Montford, they didn't tell the results. Itself. OK. Mahatma Gandhi has got it. I must also do it. I haven't yet pronounced the results. OK, OK. All right, please do share once you receive it. So I'll just wait for some more days and then I'll, uh, uh, you know, show the results, your results. We'll share your results with your friends. All right. Yeah, so here the thing is we divide the whole triangle ABC into three smaller triangles. That is the first uh, first step. Then for each triangle, for each of the three small triangles, we try to find the altitude of the three altitudes. You can find one altitude. We do that. Then what we do? For each of the three small triangles, we find the area using the formula half base into height. For each of the small triangles, we find its area using the formula half base into height. And the, the sum of the areas of these three small triangles should be equal to the area of the whole triangle ABC. And for the whole triangle ABC, we'll find the area using Heron's formula and we'll equate. That way we will be able to find the lengths of the sides A, B and B, C. You see here, join. So what is the situation? A triangle circumscribes a circle. That means the three sides of the triangle act as tangents to the circle. The circle is the in circle. The circle is the in circle. In circle, it's the in circle to the triangle ABC. 
triangle or triangle ABC circumscribes that circle with center O. The sides of the triangle AB, BC, and AD, sorry, AB, BC, and AC are tangential to the circle. They act as tangents to the circle. Okay, join now. OA, OA, that is join O to A, O to B. <coughs> Excuse me, and O to C. <coughs> join O to A, O to B, and O to C. So see, we have divided the whole triangle into three smaller triangles, AOB, BOC, AOC. The whole triangle is divided into three smaller triangles, AOB, BOC, AOC. So the sum of the areas of these three small triangles will be equal to the area of the whole triangle ABC. Now where are the altitudes? So we know that uh, AB is a tangent. So let us say that this is the point of contact. I've called it E here. So I'll say the same thing here. Let's say E is the point of contact. Then if you draw a radius through E, if you draw a radius through E, or if you draw the radius through E, you know that this radius will be perpendicular to the tangent. And OE becomes the altitude to the side AB of triangle AOB. OE becomes the altitude of the side AB of triangle AOB. Next is triangle BOC. You can already see OD there. And we know that this angle is 90 degrees because D is the point of contact. So through D, D is the point of contact. Through D, D was radius. So 90 degrees. So OD is the altitude to the side BC of triangle BOC. Let's mark the point of contact F. Join, join FO or OF. This is 90 because point of contact, radius through the point of contact and the tangent, they are perpendicular to each other. So like this for the three triangles, we got the altitudes. Now find the areas of the three triangles using the formula half base into height. Find the area of the whole triangle using the formula, uh, so using Heron's formula. And equal the sum of the areas of the three small triangles is equal to the area of the whole triangle ABC. So now if this is eight, if this one is, if BD is 8, BE is 8. If CD is 8, CF is 8. CF is 8 because CD is 8. BD is 8, BE is 8. Now we don't know AF or AE. But we know that AF is equal to AE. AF is equal to AE. So we'll call it X. Now children, what's the length of the side AB? What is the length of the side AB? I'm um, 8 plus X. 8 plus X. What is, uh, what is the length of the side BC? 6 plus X. 6 plus 8, 14. And what's the length of the side AC? 6 plus X. 6 plus X. Huh? What's the length of the side AC? 8. What is the length of the side AC? I'm 8 plus X. 8 6 plus, plus X. X. No, I, I can hear 6 plus X. I'm asking one minute. What is the length of the side AB? 
from 8 plus x. 8 plus x or x plus 8. What is the length of the site BC? 14 centimeters. 14. 6 plus 8, 14. What is the length of the site AC? I'm 6 plus 6. Where 6 plus 6? I can hear 6. AC, AC. Oh, I have marked it incorrectly. I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't notice it. I was wrong all the way. Oh my God, nobody told me. Here. Okay, okay. You are all right. Since I marked it incorrectly. Yeah, yeah. 6 plus X. Or X plus 6. Okay. All right. So, children, when you find the triangle, when you find the area of triangle AOB, 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 half into base AB, base AB, X plus 8. Into height OE. OE is the height. Radius. Radius is given 4 centimeters. Radius is 4. OD, the radius is 4. OE, radius is 4. OF, radius is 4. So in all the three triangles, you know the length of the altitudes. OE, OD, OF. All radius, no? So 4 centimeters. It's given. It's given. So into 4. Half base into height. Half base AB. Into height. OE is, OE is the altitude on AB. OE is the altitude on AB. Okay. Half base into it. So you can work this. You can work this to ones or two twos or whatever. You will get the area. Now tell me for triangle uh, BOC, half into what's the base? BOC. 14. Ma 14. Into height? 4. 4. Four. Correct. For triangle uh, AOC, so one moment. Six yeah, now for triangle AOC, half into base into height, half into what's the base? Six plus six. X plus six. X plus six. X plus six. Half into base, X plus six into height? Four centimeters. Four. This is the height, this is the altitude. Half into x plus 6 into 4. Half base, base x plus 6 into altitude 4. Half base into height, half into base x plus 6 into height 4. So we found the areas of the three triangles, small triangles using half base into height. Now let's find the area of the whole triangle ABC using Heron's formula. So see here, you know you'll have to find the semi-perimeter. You know you have to find the semi-perimeter, AB plus BC plus AC. Understand this? It's easy. I'm not saying anything about this.
All right. So that's about semi perimeter. Now area of triangle ABC is this is the formula root of S into S minus A. S minus B into S minus C. This is S. This is S minus A. Minus A. So be careful children. S minus A. See how do you write S? Root of S into S. I'll write S minus A here. How do you write S minus A? What is S? This is S. S minus A, minus A, A which is X plus 8. So S minus A will be X plus 14, minus X, minus 8. S minus A. X plus 14, minus X plus 8. So X plus 14, minus X, minus 8. S minus B, this is S. S minus B, minus 14. This is A, right? This is A, this is B, this is C. And S minus C. S. What is S? S is X plus 14. Minus C, minus X plus 6. So X plus 14. Minus X minus 6. So once you remove the bracket, this is what you will get S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. I'm telling you again, this is S minus C minus C. Why, why bracket? Because whenever there is more than one term, you will enclose it in a bracket. S is X plus 14 in a bracket. C is X plus 6 in a bracket. S minus C between the brackets minus sign. So that makes it X plus 14 minus X minus 6. Yes or no children? Any doubt there? No ma'am. No ma'am. Okay. So that's about uh, uh, substituting S into S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. Then on simplifying, this is what you get. X plus 14 from here. And here, X and minus X cancels. Let me clear it. See, this one as it is, X plus 14 as it is. X minus X cancels. 14 minus 8 is 6. Here, these two gets cancelled. X. X minus X cancels. 14 minus 6 is 8. Now this is nothing but 6 eighths of 48. 48 into so here 6 eighths of 48 x. You can see the x here. You can see x plus 14 here. So 48 x. You can you can even write it as what is 48 actually? 16 3 the. You can also write it like this. 16 no. So it's 4 and. I'll write it here, children. You can also write it like this. Because uh, for 48 is what? 48 is 16, threes are 48. So 16, threes are meaning 16 will come out as 4. 16 will come out as a square root of 4. You can also write as 4. Root of 3x into x plus 14 centimeter square. I've just left it with the uh, root of 48x into x plus 14 centimeter square. All right. So now we have the areas of the three small triangles. 
we have the area of the whole triangle that's equal to. so this is what is the equation oh okay this i already explained but it's now here on the side so the sum of the areas of the three small triangles half base and right which we already understood which we already understood okay i found the sum directly i have not found them individually anything is fine i found the sum directly this area of one triangle one small triangle second small triangle third small triangle so I've taken out half R common. Half R is common. So in the bracket, we'll get X plus 8, 14, and X plus 6. The sum of the areas of the three small triangles. Half R is common in the three brackets. Half R. So X plus 8, 14, X plus 6. So that makes it x plus uh, x is 2x, 8 plus 14 is 22 plus 6, 28. 2 common, 2 is common, so and then 2 and 2 gets cancelled. So r into x plus 14. r into x plus 14. Here. One minute, children. What is this? Half base into right, half base into right, half base into right, half r x plus 8, half r 2x 28, 2 common x plus 14, 2 r x plus 14. What do I suddenly have this? 4 into 2 x plus 14. Have I did it? Have I gone wrong anywhere here, children? Oh, the value of r is 4. Okay. <laughs> I was like wondering how suddenly I wrote r is 4. Okay, the value of r is 4 is given to us in the question. I forgot about that. The value of r is 4 is given to us, right? You can either substitute it here. The value of r is 4. You can either take 4. I, I just forgot it. <laughs> so the value of r is given children. The value of r is 4. You can either take that here. You can you can even you can take that value here. Nothing wrong. I have not taken it here. I have used it here in the end. I have used that value here in the end. That's all. Anything is fine. You can use 4 here children. Don't think that you should work it like this. I'm sure you will not do that. You can take 4 here, you can take 4, R is 4, no, you can take 4 here. And then you can cancel 2 1s are 2 2s are, 2 1s are 2 2s are, 2 1s are 2 2s are, are. Then what do you get here? Uh, 2 into x is 2x plus 16. You get 2x plus 16 from here. Then when you multiply here, 2 into 14 is 28. And then here 2x plus 12, 2x plus 12. Then when you add everything, you will get 4x plus, uh, what is this, 28, 28 is 56. Okay, then you'll take out 4 common and you'll get x plus uh, 14. The same thing. You can please apply the value of r, which is 4. You can please apply the value of r, which is 4. I'm on doubt. One second. You can take R as 4 here. 4. One second. Uh, Shakti, yes. Let me just finish it. And then we'll uh, take up your doubt. 2 1s are, 2 2s are children. So now you should multiply. No, 2 into x is 2x. 2 into 8 is 16. So 2x plus 16. Then here, 2 1s are, 2 2s are. So 14 2s are 28. Here, 4 ones are, I'm sorry, 2 ones are, 2 twos are. Then 2 into x is 2x plus 2 into 6 is 12. So you get 4x plus 56. On taking 4 common, you'll get x plus 14. And that's what we got here also, x plus 14. Sorry, what's wrong with me? 4x plus 56. Uh, upon taking 4 common, you get x plus 14. 
So that's what we have here also. 4 into x plus 15 centimeters square. Now we know that 1 is equal to 2. 1 is equal to 2. 1 is equal to 2. What is 1? What is 1? The area of the whole triangle ABC. What is 1? The area of the whole triangle ABC. What is 2? The sum of the areas of the three small triangles. What is 2? What is 2? The sum of the areas of the three small triangles. They are equal. The area of the whole triangle is equal to the sum of the areas of the three small triangles. So on equating, is this correct children? Do we understand 1 is equal to 2? What is 1? What is result 1? The area of the whole triangle. Area of triangle ABC. Area of the whole triangle ABC. And what is 2? Result 2? Sum of all three triangles. Sum of the three triangles. Some of the areas of the three Some small area of triangles. Yeah, correct. Some of the areas of the three small triangles. So you can equate because the areas will be the same. <clears throat> so on equating, this is what we have. 4 into x plus 14 is equal to root of 48x plus uh, so into x plus 14. To get rid of the square root symbol, we square on both the sides. To get rid of the square root symbol, we don't want this. So we square on both the sides. When you square on both the sides, 16 into x plus 14 the whole square. 16 into x plus 14 the whole square. Because when you square 4 and 16, x plus 14, when you square it, it is x plus 14 the whole square. When you square this one on both the sides, the square root is eliminated. When you square this one on both the sides, the square root is eliminated. So you will have 48x uh, into x plus 14. Now how do we continue working? Okay, so you can see that there is 16 here and this is 16 threesa. There is 16 here and this is 16 threesa. So you can divide by 16 throughout. So when you divide by 16 throughout, what you, this one divided by 16. 16 and 16 cancels x plus 14 the whole square. When you divide this one by 16, 16 ones are 16 threes are. So 3x, 3x into x plus 14. On dividing by 16 throughout, on dividing both the sides by 16. So you get x plus 14 the whole square is equal to 3x into x plus 14. Now don't divide by, see you can divide by x plus 14 the whole square. When you divide by an x, you can divide by a constant, but if you divide by an expression which has x in it, you will lose one value of x. That's all it is. That value of x which you lose, okay, let me work it and take it instead of just talking like this. Let me see what happens, or let us see what happens when you divide by x plus 14, okay. Now, supposing we do dividing by x plus 14 throughout. Dividing by x plus 14 throughout. Children, am I clear? We divided by, <coughs> we divided by 16 throughout. No. Now, uh, you know, our doubt is why even x plus 14 is there on both the sides. Why not divide by x plus 14 on both the sides? Okay, you divide by x plus 14 on both the sides. We divide by x plus 14 on both the sides. So what happens? This gets cancelled. Here what happens? x plus 14. x plus 14 is equal to 3x. So on solving this, you will get minus 2x is equal to minus 14. x is equal to 7. You will get only one value for x. You will lose the other value, which is minus 14. It's okay. It's okay that that value which you will lose, you know, will not, it will not be an acceptable value. So it's okay. You can divide by x plus 14, but why we don't divide is that because you cannot see the other value of x to get both the values. So again, it's a conventional method. We never divide by an expression which has the variable in it. Because here you are solving for x. You, you are solving for x and you want all possible values of x. And this one being quadratic will have two values for x. You want to get both the values of x. 
you don't want to lose you don't want to lose one value you want both so that is why we divide, don't divide by x plus 14 but even if you do if you divide by x plus 14 you will get that value which is the correct value of x you will only not get minus 14 that's the difference so here i did not divide by x plus 14 throughout i brought this one i transposed then x plus 14 is common x plus 14 is common i've taken out x plus 14 common x plus 14 is common so you will get x plus 14 minus 3x x plus 14 minus 3x how does that happen it's like you know you have a square minus 3x into a so if you take a common another a will be there minus 3x like that x plus 14 x plus 14 x plus 14 is common in the bracket this x plus 14 the whole square so one x plus 14 you should write and here this x plus 14 is outside so this minus 3x so x minus 3x is minus 2x so this product is zero that means either x plus 14 is zero or 14 minus 2x is zero so i'm solving this you get two values for x minus 14 or 7 and uh, x cannot be negative because x represents the length of this line segment this af is x or ae is x how can they be negative how can the value of x be negative here because it's the length of the line segment so minus 14 is rejected and we take uh, x is 7 when if x is 7 That means this is 7. This one we already know is 6 and 8. So the length of the side AC is 7 plus 6, 13 centimeters. And the length of the side AB is 7 plus 8, 15 centimeters. So once we got X, once we got X, we are able to find the length of the line segments AC and AB. You might have already learned it in school, so you know it. Any question? Yes, uh, Shakti? Uh, my, my doubt is cleared, ma'am. Okay. Yes, uh, sir? Yes, ma'am. I want to ask that we can divide by x plus 14. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Always you can do it. But you, just that you will not get that other value for x. That also is not a problem. That value you cannot accept also. But better you don't divide by x plus 14 because you don't know what that other value is going to be. You know? So it's better you don't divide by x plus 14. Okay. Yeah. And please write it later. Take a screenshot. Practice this.
Is it done, children? Any questions? No, ma'am. No. We do this, we should do this one. Yeah. So you can see uh, a quadrilateral ABCD. It's drawn to circumscribe a circle. Prove that AB plus CD is equal to AD plus BC. That is, we need to prove that the sum of the opposite sides are equal. The sum of the opposite sides. See here, what is what is a what are a, b, and c, d? A, b, and c, d. How are they related? A, b, and c, d. A, b, and c, d. They are opposite sides. And what is this plus? Sum of the opposite sides. Again, how a, d, and b, c. How are they related? A, d, and b, c. A, d, and b, c. Opposite sides plus sum of the opposite sides. So you must prove that the sum of the opposite sides are equal. When I see a sum, these are the opposite sides, sum. Opposite sides, sum. You must prove that the sum of the opposite sides, sum of the opposite sides are equal. So quadrilateral circumscribing a circle, the sum of the opposite sides are equal. Yeah, so is AP equal to AS? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, like this, complete the other results. What are the other results? AP is equal to AS then? And B is equal to DR. One minute. When you do this, you know, you can just make it less messy. Uh, so what is, you need to prove that AB plus CD, right? What is AB made up of? What is AB made up of? AP plus BP. AP plus BP. CD made up of? And CR. CR. Yeah. So what you do on one side, you know, you write AP is equal to BP is equal to CR is equal to DR is equal to. So that when you when you add these two, you will get AB. And when you add these two, you will get CD. Now from the other two sides, you will get uh, AD and BC. Let's tell you again. A, B. A, B is A, P and B, P. C, D is C, R and D, R. So we'll find, we'll write uh, using the, you know, what is that? Using the theorem, tangents from the, uh, from an external point of the circle are equal. We'll complete this. A, P is equal to B, P is equal to C, R is equal to and D, R is equal to. So AP is equal to what? See, five, see, we have written these AP, BP, CR and DR. Because when you add AP and BP, you will get AB. And this one will give you uh, CD. Now AP is equal to what, children? AS. AS, ma'am. BP is equal to? BQ. BQ. Okay. Then CR is equal to? CQ. CQ. DR? DS. DS. 
Now add. Now add all these four. Add all these four. So when you add, it means adding the LHS, adding the LHS and adding the RHS. Adding LHS and RHS. Adding LHS and RHS. So AP plus BP is AP plus CRDR is CD is equal to when you add AS and DS, AS and DS, you will get AD. And when you add BQ and CQ, you get BC. So like this, we have proved that AB plus CD is equal to AD plus BC. Now, when you continue with the same, uh, you know, you can prove one more result. Supposing the quadrilateral is given to be a parallelogram. Supposing. So here it is a quadrilateral. Now, how will the uh, question uh, be based on this result? They'll give you the length of AB. They'll, they may give you this figure or they may just give it in words. Okay, they'll give you the length of AB, the length of CD, the length of AD and ask you to find BC. They'll give you the lengths. In this result, we have all the four sides of the quadrilateral AB, uh, BC, CD and AD. I'm pausing so that you can, you know, get that in your mind, whatever I'm saying. In this result, we have AB, BC, CD, AD, the four sides of the quadrilateral. Given the length of any three sides, you can find the fourth one using this relationship. So sometimes they'll give you AB, the length of AB, the length of CD. They'll give you BC and they'll ask you to find AD. So substitute here and find AD. Now here ABCD is a quadrilateral. Supposing it's given ABCD is a parallelogram. Suppose it's given it's a parallelogram. The question will be for the, the figure is similar. Okay, it will be like this. If ABCD is a parallelogram, prove that given ABCD is a parallelogram, you must prove this result. Okay, AB plus CD, that is opposite sides, the sum of the opposite sides are equal. You should prove that result. And then you should show that ABCD is a rhombus. You must show that it's a rhombus. That is, the statement will be like this. Prove that a parallelogram circumscribing a circle is a rhombus. Prove that a parallelogram circumscribing a circle is a rhombus. So you should draw the figure like this and uh, prove this result. You must prove this result. This result is not asked to be proved, but you should prove this result. And then in this result, you should continue. How? It's given the parallelogram. That means opposite sides are equal. That means A, B and C, D are equal. A, B and C, D are equal. So you can make it A, B plus A, B is equal to opposite sides are equal. See, children, I'll, I don't know if I'm clear. I'll come again. Now, we just understood how to prove that. We just understood how to prove that uh, AB plus CD, opposite sides, is equal to AD plus BC. We just understood this. Supposing the question is, prove that or if a parallelogram circumscribes a circle, prove that it's a rhombus. That is, if ABCD is a parallelogram circumscribing the circle like this, then prove that ABCD is a rhombus. For that, you should get this result. You should prove this AB plus CD is equal to AD plus BC. And this one, it's a parallelogram, right? So opposite sides are equal. A, B, and CD are opposite sides, they're equal. So you can write it as AB plus AB is equal to opposite sides. AD and BC will be equal because it's a parallelogram. 
Opposite sides are equal. So anything you can change. AD is equal to BC in a parallelogram. Opposite sides are equal. Anything you can change. See here also. Here also. Whichever you want, you can change. Like AB and CD are the opposite sides and they're equal. Because it's a parallelogram. Either you can write AB plus AB or CD plus CD. You can even write CD plus CD. Why? Because the CD as it is, this AB is equal to CD. Opposite sides are equal in a parallelogram. Is equal to anything you can change. You can write AD as it is and write BC as AD because opposite sides are equal. BC is equal to AD, opposite sides are equal in a parallelogram. So this gives you twice CD is equal to twice AD. So CD is equal to AD. CD is equal to AD. CD. CD is equal to AD, this one. But they are adjacent sides. In a parallelogram, when one pair of adjacent sides are equal, it's a rhombus. In a parallelogram, when one pair of adjacent sides are equal, it's a rhombus. In a parallelogram, if one pair of adjacent sides are equal, it's a rhombus. So CD and AD, they are adjacent sides. CD and AD, they are adjacent sides and they are equal. So ABCD is a rhombus. In a parallelogram, if one pair of adjacent sides is equal, it's a rhombus. Therefore, ABCD is a rhombus. Go through the slide, children. Please read. Read what is given. Is it okay, children? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Class, use the emoji. Raise your hand. Arnav, Shriya, Shakti, Muttubail, Harshita, Pridashini, Hariyaran, Sudarshan, Nivedita, Badahari, Srinivasan, Lakshita, Aksharam, Shivani, Tirunesh. Okay, Tirunesh. Children, are you sure you understood this? 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. So I was telling you just when you write it, you know, make sure that you write like you have to prove AB plus CD. You know what is AB made up of? AP and BP. So write that AP and BP so that when you add these two, you will get AB. And then below you write CR and DR because when you add CR and DR, you will get CD. So A, you need to get AB. So you write AP is equal to BP is equal to. So when you add AP and BP, you will get AB. Then write CR is equal to DR is equal to. So when you add CR and DR, you will get CD. Then complete this. Add LHS and RHS, you will get this result. So that uh, the parallelogram circums circumscribing a circle is a rhombus. Go through this. Any questions? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. All right. Please take a screenshot. This will take some time, children, so we'll do this in the next class. This one is easy. Prove that the angle between the two tangents drawn from an external point of the circle is supplementary to the angle subtended by the line segment joining the points of contact at the center. Okay. So, circle. Circle is center row. Tangents. Angle between two tangents drawn from an external point of the circle. Angle between the two tangents drawn from an external point of the circle. So, let us say the external point is P and we draw tangents like this. Okay, let me call this A and B. So we have drawn two tangents PA and PB from the external point P to the circle. We know that PA is equal to PB. So these are the two tangents which are drawn from the external point P to the circle, PA and PB. See it. See it. To, you know, leave that angle between. Leave this now. Leave this for now. The two tangents drawn from an external point to the circle. 
external point. Circle P and PB are the two tangents. Now the angle between the two tangents. So this is the angle between the two tangents. This is the angle between the two tangents. Now this angle is supplementary to another angle we have to prove. We have to prove that this angle is supplementary to another angle. Which is another angle? That angle is obtained by the line segment joining the points of contact at the center. So which are the points of contact? Name the points of contact, children. Name the points of contact. A and, a, and a and B. A and B. A and B are the points of contact. A and B are the points of contact. Now joining the points of contact at the center. So join the points of contact uh, to the center. Please join the points of contact to the center. It's not line segment. Line se see one S makes so much of difference. Subtended by the line segments. Joining the points of contact to the center. Yeah. Which are the line segments joining the points of contact to the center? Um, o A and O B. Yeah. This is the point. This is the point of contact. Join to the center. This is one line segment. This is one line segment. Point of contact center. Join. This is the other line segment. This is the angle between the two line segments. This is the angle between the two line segments. This is the angle between the two line segments. You need to prove that this angle and this angle are supplementary. The angle subtended by the line segments. OA and OB are the line segments. OA and OB are the line segments. A is the point of contact. AO from the point of contact to the center. BO from the point of contact to the center. So AO and BO are line segments. The angle made by these two line segments, this angle. This is the angle made by the two line segments, AO and BO. You should prove that this angle and this angle, they are supplementary. So how do you prove that they are supplementary? What is the measure of this angle? We will have to prove that this angle plus this angle is 180. We will have to prove that this angle plus this angle is 180. What's the measure of this angle? What's the measure 90 of angle? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. What's the measure of this angle? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Now, what is the name you would give to AOBP? Quadrilateral, ma'am. It's a quadrilateral. AOBP is a quadrilateral. In this quadrilateral, what is the sum of the two angles? A and B. 1 and 2. What's the sum eight, of the. 180 eight, degrees. 180 eight, 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 eight degrees. What is the remaining sum? 180 eight, degrees. 180 eight, 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 eight degrees. So 360 minus 180. 180 is the remaining sum. So the sum of these two angles will be 180. So the sum of these two angles will be 180 because the sum of these two angles is 180. So from 360, 180 is gone. Remaining is 180 and that will be the sum of these two angles. Yes, children, please take a screenshot. So it's like this. AO and BO are the line segments. AO and BO are the line segments. Joining the points of contacts. So not points of contact, sorry. Points of contact. A and B are the two points of contact. 
AO is a line segment joining the point of contact A to the center. BO is another line segment joining the point of contact B to the center. This is the angle between these two line segments. So this is one of the two angles. This is one angle between the two line segments. And the other angle is about is this angle. That is the angle between the two tangents. This is the angle between the two tangents. We must prove that these two are supplementary. These two are supplementary. Yeah, the proof is easy, children. Take a screenshot. So we've used the angle sum property of a quadrilateral. The sum of the four angles is 180. The sum of the four, sorry, 360. In the quadrilateral, the sum of the four angles is 360, but we know two angles are 90 each. So the sum of the remaining two angles will be 180. Because here the sum of two angles is 180. So the remaining sum is 180. That will be the sum of the remaining two angles. Is it fine, children? Yes, ma'am. Right. Please take a screenshot. I've enabled uh, some tests on statistics. Please try to do it at least one in a day. Or alternate days also, if you do one, you can finish some three, four by the weekend. If you do one test every alternate day, you can finish at least uh, three to four by this uh, Saturday. All right, children. So that's it for today's session. All right, children, that's it for today's session. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, children. Good night.